Okay, hey, 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 train your plants every day. Jordan Skull coming at you from the STEM lab. So today I kind of want to integrate some some broad uh, quantum mechanics and particle um, physics equations into the field of what we generally do with the STEM mechanics. Now obviously STEMs are going to be roads and abruptly long sequence of terms that reciprocate abruptly at shorthand. Um, so that's a given space. Think about whatever space you're thinking with. Think about how as an aspect of quantum mechanics or particle physics that is relative here, I like to use Nodem's theorem. Uh, she was a uh, mathematician back in Einstein's day, back in all that time frame. She dealt with time symmetry um, and gravitational symmetry. Um, you look at the human body, that's, that's um, vertically uh, symmetrical. Or you look at a, a ball that's dimensionally uh, sim, uh, symmetrical. Doesn't matter which axis you turn it on, it's going to be symmetrical. Um, but gravitationally, symmetry has to deal with other things. So you're looking, I like to think about fields um, and how they generate gravitational waves to be symmetry. Um, thermaling processes, cutting the saw, when you look at the frame of what they do, uh, each in their own little box, write it all out on a piece of paper in a tutorial, on a how-to or parts or inventory, if you will, a term base that is reciprocal to an abruptly long sequence to the real parts, the real particles, the real dimensions that make that a whole state, a mechanics. That they are symmet uh, that they are simultaneously symmet uh, symmetrical to one another. Um, in that field, in mathematics, they're just based in points. They're just based in this thing that hits this next one that carries the next part with momentum. That's essentially what you're looking at in terms of Nodem's theorem. Um, you'll have aspects of obviously force ma um, that, in terms of a training aspect, a is the force. Thermally, how to train somebody to work a saw, how to train somebody to do labor work, you know, shovel work. You know, you're, you're thinking about the force, the mass, the timelines that, the, that that would take to do anything, and therefore the accelerations positively or negatively in terms of uh, max and average um, uh, personal ratings or professional ratings that uh, a system specifically needs to abide to a universal law of gravity, um, that the effects on the machine have gear works and therefore everything will be universal to that and therefore transmit momentum or velocity or accelerations negatively or positively into those separate fields, those boxes, those individual terms and frames. Um, so you got uh, Fermat's theorem which is an a ax bx cx equation so you're going to deal with some algebraic forms in terms of these processes ax thermaling is a e or plus a bx system which is a is b in algebra towards their dimensional point their aspect of what we just brought up a second ago to equal causal dimensions the end result and therefore how it transmits not just out the door from this observable universe which is your your stone dock your particle lab your your whatever you have you but also into the much more broad spectrum of the inst if you will the installer putting into a place or somebody's terms of what they had to do there's obviously somebody's pay which had to pay this bill to do this kind of aspect that put in work that transitioned this into dollar bills that then reciprocates back to me and my paycheck which can be idealized as an axby um, CZ function in terms of Beale's conjecture, which is another STEM problem. Um, one of the equations, or well, several of the equations I like to use for this example is Maxwell's equations on spectrum or electromagnetic spectrum. You can use, um, which has to do with Lapikant's and the Lapikant's time B equals 4 pi D, which is the symbol for, I like to apply it as pressure, or, uh, again, they all apply back to frame, it's all amechanical regardless of the symbol that you use to reference this. Um, the symbol 
isn't just mathematics, remember. You're trying to apply this in real world from a trainer's perspective to be that, to be that anything you look in here can be referenced as a point, a dimension, a number, a particle, a equation base. You look at a pallet on the ground that's not burnt, well that's essentially a sum to some degree. It's a derivative. It's a power series that led to that point and therefore the momentum of how that'll carry through. It's electrical engineering while well, you're dis dis discerning how from you're looking at the electrical schematics of this is a resistor, this is a capacitor, this is a um, this is an LED that therefore also has a beacon point to it, but also acts as a resistance point that allows the conduction of the information to travel correctly. Um, the laws of conservation of energy and information are going to be very relative equations and formulas, uh, terms to understand here. Uh, reverse time symmetry is also very effective, um, in this idea of looking at a thing. So we're gonna be talking about Schrodinger's equations of a cat in a box, or integrating anything we do in this life is to integrate chaos. The system was normal, that is nature. Even if you're looking at something like a stone dock that in this observable universe, at this point where I decided to look at that and therefore break it down using mathematics anything and all things are A, and we're going to break it away from that, creates chaos, creates a field that is equal to zero to some degree. It gives an internal mass zero that when I look at a finished pallet of stone, that at that point, A equals B, and B equals, or excuse me, A equals D, and uh, A equals C, and B equals D. But as I look at a finished pallet, of stone, given that we know that there are multiple right answers to how to create that singular state of stone, and trying to distinguish which is the best, best method for certain circumstances that lead to that point or effect, or what is the most efficient model to do that, when I see a finished palette, I may not know that difference. If I walk into it at a certain time or at a certain point, I see it outside and I really can't distinguish backtracking it what the perfect analyzation to what made that be what it is when it looks the same against me cutting head and off treads and burning them that way against head and off block and then cutting it and then just burning the face separating what needs to be separated i look at this and they say both of them equal d in this category a and b methods both do this and i can't distinguish which method was which in particle physics, they say that this is the slit experiment, that I'm going to shoot this particle through these two slits, and it could be any one of these mass points. But based on the physics that we know, I see a lot of chips on the edge. I see a process. I see slag on the corners or something like that. It's going to reciprocate back to me to give me more understanding to watch which, um, what physics led to the results so I can distinguish if this was this method with 99.9% .9 certainty of that's what those aspects were. I see failures in those aspects. I see the chip on the edge. I can tell you at what point, given at what point on the edge where it's chipped, to distinguish which method needs work, which method needs uh, an additional faculties or functioning to allow it to apply correctly, so then I can say that the laws of conservation make it even harder for me to distinguish which method it was, because I shouldn't be able to distinguish the difference. When I pile through that pallet, I can look at that and tell you which block that was, which quarry that was, that under this criteria of what part of the mountain it came out of, distinguishing how much jack it had into it, if I know some of the other features. It's going to help me distinguish which particles, which mathematics go into that idea, so therefore I can better distinguish where that particle really is when I'm distinguishing it inside of this frame. That's reverse time sy symmetry as much as time symmetry. You're looking at stars and how they move in the planet, that the force MA problem is going to distinguish this next movement, and therefore the next movement, and that there's a planet over here, so it's going to bend. It's going to do that based on the mass of this star, and it's going to bend this much, and it's going to travel in that direction until it hits this other one, and it moves this other direction, because the field changes at an equal rate, just like the laws of motion. 
It's going to stay at a constant rate. Even though we abide by this rule inside of a gravitational field, the Earth and how things sit, this chair sits here with, at force MA. It's sitting here at zero but acting into that model. It's not moving, but yet it moves at a constant speed when I go to set up the arrangement of my room and how I position things. That's just like pallet setup. That's just like um, turn ratios to why I distinguish whether I'm double setting something or triple setting something or running running the two three quintilla on the set on the saws. Um, two stacks with treads with double stacked or running double stacks or you know any one of those models what is the most efficient model in here. I'm looking at it from a certain point and what stack I have on the ground or how many pallets I have on the ground or the rock quality and how I break that down to distinguish which is going to be the fastest method. So at that point now I can distinguish some force. I can say I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to do a faster than average rating if necessary to equal the same timeline a normal day would equal out to be. And all it's got, it all has to equal zero here. And uh, zero, anything other than zero, a plus, in addition to those models, does not lead to a finished palette of any criteria. Palette, uh, pattern, treads, custom rock, whatever the game may be. Two and five eighths going to something that is 18 on the inch, uh, 24 on the inch, instead of a pattern cut. You know, it, they all play the same way. Uh, it also applies to external forces like pallet space outside and any other variable that might transition why I make certain calculations the way I make them. It helps me accelerate where I stand right at this moment and history events in terms of the symmetry that I can't really distinguish away from this idea. This is pilot's theory. This is... Uh, um, backtracking uh, to a certain degree as a mason Planck, force ma the laws of gravity gravitational waves uh, air turbulence equations um, Riemann hypothesis in terms of the pattern of prime numbers you know we're we're saying that the prime numbers don't necessarily travel to infinity here we're looking at them in terms of an observable universe we don't have 63 billion 485 we have seven and at that point i can make a very specific pattern even though if that's not geometric to any other any other thing a perfect square that is what that number is i can change the arrangement of those aspects i can change how the pattern works one two three one two three the pattern should look the same i could change the frame state one two three four five six and there's going to be a very specific pattern under those ideas even though there are multiple patterns that aren't necessarily symmetry uh symmetrical to one another but how they obey to the rules of what makes a prime number a prime number equals a pattern. This number times this number is the only two sets that make this number. And no other combination of those ideas make that number. No other combinations of those two things make four. Uh, one times four is four. One times two is two. Two times two equals four. That's only that in itself can equal that number. Anything else doesn't work that way. Well, in frames like that, or looking at stone docks, or looking at business models, or resumes, or particles, and how they break those things down, they apply to the same way. They're all based in points. They're all based in dimensions and calculations. Wave functions that, as they uh, reciprocate, or as they transmit through barriers or walls from one set to the next, how thermaling is symmetrical to working a saw, are still based in particles they're still based in how you psychologically perceive those things if you can break that barrier if you can look through those aspects see the chips in the stone see the the quarry see the base in the wall and therefore use those analyzations say i want that part of the rock i want that part of the mountain right there if i can get it so what do i got to do to get those parts what do i got to do to get the, the sweet stuff in the mountain do i have to wait because they're unloading that part so we'll take some time before we start buying rock from them again you know if you can take those things into consideration you know it's going to make every other calculation different it's going to say the process time it's going to say the the physical workload the waste the overburden any of those other problems start to dissolve away to a certain degree equally as looking at them and processing them still allow them to dissolve away or um, what's the word for it transmit 
with as little function or friction as possible. So friction, uh, free radiance, and all the good stuff that comes into this. And obviously there's a lot more. But as a grinder, I grind. So I don't usually get to talk about this stuff very often, but I use it every day. Catch you on the next one.